So it's telling you <clears throat> that's where your error is, or at least that's where it believes your error is. So at least gives you a starting point. So I'm gonna save that again. It says we successfully compiled. Now I will open up the CSS, which is actually being compressed. So it's a little bit more difficult to read than uh, normally styled CSS, but it's not bad. Not, nothing like the uh, minified JS. So let's look for the very first line, my new class, which now has brackets. It now has colons. It now has semicolons. Uh, it has everything that actual CSS would need because this is an actual CSS file now. So I can actually use this in my code. So if I was going to use it, I could just call it as a class, my new class, and that would work. So that is how Stylus gets compiled down. Uh, we'll show you real quickly. We'll bring up code kit. We'll come back to the files. I'll select my Stylus file. See how I'm compressing it to save space. Let's just do it in regular. So if I save this, I open up my CSS. As you can see now, everything's formatted as you would actually think to write out CSS. See how much longer the file is, though. So because of that, it has a lot more lines. It has a lot more file. It, the file size will be larger. It'll take longer to download. So I prefer to keep everything compressed. All right. Next, we're actually going to create a coffee script file because I do not have one in here yet but we'll call it test dot coffee all right let's uh, create a function shall we we'll just call this my new function equals uh, let's see arrow down and then we will just log out. This is my awesome new coffee script function. Very quick and easy uh, just to get the point of how it compiles down. So this is of course the syntax to write a function with coffee script. You just use the arrow. Uh, there, I'm not going to go into the, all the syntax of coffee script, but this is how you would create a function so then you could call this function uh, let's say to make it a little bit easier so maybe you can understand let's say we want to pass in a parameter we'll just call it value if we want to use that value we can actually throw it directly into a string and we'll just call it let's just say this this and then we use value so again I'm not gonna go to the syntax of coffee script if you want to know you can easily look it up I think the website is something like coffeescript.org, I believe. Um, but now, to use that function, we can say my new function, and then we will say awesome. Uh, and actually, with CoffeeScript, I don't even need these. I don't even need the parentheses. I can just call it just like this. So this will fire this new function and pass awesome into value so that it gets thrown into this value. So when I console.log this, this will console.log. This is my awesome new coffee script function. <clears throat> okay, so now let's jump over to CodeKit and see if it's refreshed and found my coffee script file. Yes, it has. Right there it is, test.coffee. So as you can see, it's telling me it's going to compile it into the same folder that the test.coffee file is in. It's going to compile it as a JS file with the same name, test.js. Then it also gives me some options over here on the side. Uh, I will note I'm not going to cover the imports and the imported by. Those are some advanced features that are actually fantastic to use. And uh, if you're interested in using CodeKit, I would highly recommend them, especially if you're going to be writing in Coffee or JavaScript. Uh, but uh, you can look those features up more on the Coffee, or I'm sorry, the CodeKit website. Okay, so we can tell we can tell CodeKit to just completely ignore this file. Don't compile this file. Leave it alone. I don't want you to touch it. Or we can tell it the output style is going to be regular or no function wrapper. This is a, a coffee script thing, so if you don't understand this, don't worry about it. Uh, check output with. We can check it against JS hint or JS lint, either or, doesn't matter, whatever you choose. 
and then we can minify compiled JavaScript or not minify it. So just to show you what the minified looks like, we'll go ahead and minify this. And let's jump back over to Coda. When I hit save, we should see a test.javascript file or test.js file pop up over here. Okay. This is telling me compiled successfully, the compiled JavaScript did not pass JS hint. To aid debugging, the unminified compiled JavaScript was written to the output path. The following two issues apply to that file. So what that's telling me is even though I told it I wanted the JavaScript minified, because it failed, the JavaScript output failed to pass JS hint, uh, the validation, it did not minify it so that I can uh, easily read the JavaScript instead of having to look at the minified version. And then it's also telling me what JS hint uh, is telling us that that is wrong. So what it's telling me is console is not defined. Well, we all know I don't have to define console, uh, but we also have my new function awesome. It says problem awesome is not defined. That is a problem because awesome is not a function or a variable. I just want it to be a string. So we will save that again. It's tell us we're still going to have problems because console is not defined. So what I'm going to do for the sake of this video is I'm going to tell it to stop validating. I want I don't want it to check against anything because I know there's not a problem with that. So now let's jump back over here. We'll save it. Now it says success compiled test.coffee. We'll pull up the test.javascript. And as you can see, it is minified. It is one line. And if you even and actually if you look where I wrote value. So as you can see, we have a equals function. Did I say a equals function? No, I did not. I wrote my new function it equals the function and then asking it to give me a, a parameter or an argument of value. But when it compiled it down to save, to save uh, space and to reduce the file size, the minifying the JavaScript will actually convert your variable names to single letters uh, if you have more than than um, more than there are possibilities in the alphabet to use single letters it'll start doubling them but it'll still be smaller than your original var variable size so this actually output a equals function and then it's asking for a, uh, a variable a parameter of a and it's using that where I wrote value so that's uh, that's how it gets minified down so that's the minified version. We can then pull up CodeKit, tell it, I want you to not minify this file, save it, pull up the JavaScript, and there you go. As you can see, now it did not, it, it kept it all separated nicely. It's much easier to read. Uh, this is the function wrapper that CoffeeScript throws on there. Uh, like I said, if you don't understand that, don't worry about it. Uh, but it automatically creates a variable for us. Notice I didn't have to do that in CoffeeScript. That gets compiled down. Um, all of this just just works, and, and it's, uh, it compiles it very quickly and does a lot of the stuff for you. So all I had to do was hit save, and now I have a perfectly working JavaScript file. Um, again, I like to keep things small, so I'm going to keep it minified. We will come back to the coffee, save, close this, test.js, there it is. It's minified again. So that's a couple of the features of, of CodeKit. Uh, the last thing that I will cover here is CodeKit will actually reduce your file size of your images. It will, will optimize your images, I should say. Uh, reduce is a bad word. It will actually optimize the file size of your images without reducing the noticeable quality. You can't even tell a difference. But for example, I've already run the uh, optimization on these images, but all you have to do really, if you want to optimize all images in your project, select your project over here under projects, right click and just say optimize all images. You'll get a little check mark over here once it's been optimized. And then if you click on it, it will show you the initial size, the current size. 
So that's the difference. So it, you re it reduced your file size by almost 7% here. On this guy, by 0 0.21. And this guy I had already run through optimization when I exported it from Photoshop. So it's as small as it can already go. Uh, and then if you actually select all of them, it will tell you the total initial size of all your files and then the current size of all your uh, image files, I'm sorry, and then the total reduction in all your image files. So that's a few features of CodeKit. Uh, you can import frameworks. Uh, you can separate all your files by these tabs here. Uh, you can even pull up the log and see uh, everything that you've compiled when you compiled it. Ref go back and look at all your, all your JS hint outputs, uh, your error logs, everything. That is CodeKit. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Uh, I really hope you decide to go download this app and take a look at it and, and uh, really give it a chance. Uh, if you are planning on scripting in anything like CoffeeScript, Stylus, Less, or SAS, a language that has to be compiled down, uh, I would highly recommend you download this app and give it a try. Uh, even if you're just writing in, in, in uh, JavaScript, you can still use this. You can use it to optimize your images. You can use it to minify your JS. You can use it to check your JS against uh, JS hint or JS lint. Uh, you can use it to automatically refresh your browser to see your changes. You, you've got all kinds of additional options, even if you're not using those, those uh, scripting languages. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Check out the uh, CodeKit website for additional details and, and more uh, detailed videos. My name is Jeremy Fox. Thank you for watching.